بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين آمنوا أشد حبا لله صدق الله العظيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العلم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Dearest brothers, respected elders, and our beloved youngsters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It gives me great pleasure to see our masjid here full, almost half full, you would say, especially with so many youngsters. Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the opportunity to have more gatherings like this and increase in our capacity, increase in our size so that the benefit can also increase. MashaAllah, we have taken this task up. Every single one of us that are here today, we should take it on our shoulders. It shouldn't just be a task for certain individuals. We should take it all on our task. This is our responsibility. Our responsibility to look after our youngsters. We go out onto the streets today and you see how many youngsters, our youngsters, from not just a household where there is no Islam, parents don't know much about Islam, but from households that parents come to the masjid, some of them even five times a day. But unfortunately the youngsters if you see, they're involved in drugs. And how many are involved with, with illicit, with non, with non mahram relationships? And the rest of it we know. But this happens, this facade, this corruption that happens, it happens because we are neglectful to this. We don't show attention. We don't really, sometimes we don't know how to do it. We don't know how to do tarbiyah of our children. We don't know sometimes. So we don't know how to really bring our children to the masjid. We come to the masjid, but do our children come with us? Whereas Rasulullah told us that Muru awladakum bisalati wahum abna wa sinin. That teach them salah. The, from the age of seven, teach them regarding salah. Rasulullah tells us to start off from a young age. Because farz, salah is not farz upon them by the time of seven. Why is because Rasulullah is teaching us that once is, is the salah that we want to in, inculcate into their lives, it should be a part of a person's lives. Why? Because in the salah, tanha alil fahsha'i wal munkar, salah will what will it do? It will stop a person from committing evil. The evils that we do daily, habitual of the salah, will make us stay away from this. This is what the Quran tells us. If it is not happening, then that means there's something wrong with our salah. Nothing wrong with salah. So, how do we do this? This is, this is the task that we need to take upon ourselves. From today, all of us, we should take this task on our shoulders. That inshallah, we're going to have more programs like this. And inshallah, we're going to make it a success. We're going to bring those of our family, maybe family, family members who maybe haven't taken part yet. Bring our nephews, our nieces, our grand grandchildren, our our cousins. Bring them. Make them take. Who, how do we know one person benefit from that? Inshallah, and they take and they change their life and they become better person, more connected to Allah. All the reward is written in our account. So this will be a sadaqah dul jariyah for us as well. Inshallah. Anyway, the topic for today is regarding the love for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, because in essence, if you look at it. Every single one of us sitting here today, we all claim to love Allah, don't we? Yes? Will there be anyone here that does not claim to love Allah? I don't think so. Yes? Every single one of us, we claim to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the question is, how much do we love Allah? 
That's the question. We all love Allah, yes. But how much do we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is the question we need to think of. Think about it for myself. That how much do I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The question that we need to pose to ourselves. This love that we have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which now no doubt which is there, it needs to increase. It needs to increase, not decrease, not stay in the same level, but it needs to increase. Get to a level where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ Those who have iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who have faith, those who have iman, how are they? They are intense in the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Intense love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, by the end of session, by the end of today's session, inshallah, we will understand what do we mean by intense love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we will understand this. So I was saying, no doubt we all claim to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes? Nobody's saying that we don't love Allah. Everybody loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, how much do we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This we will recognize, this we will understand when the time of conflict comes. What do we mean? A conflict between our own desires or somebody who we like and we love telling us to do something and on the other hand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying something different. Yes. This is the time when we understand that do we love Allah more or do we love this other thing or these other people or do we love ourselves more? So for instance, and we come across these dilemmas, these, these scenarios, these, these instances we come across in our lives daily. So many times in our day we come across these instances. For example, let's say for the youngsters here, you know when you're playing your FIFA, yeah? You're playing, yeah? Playing FIFA. What happens? We, we hear the adhan happen in the receiver. Or one shouts. It's namaz time. What are we doing? We're currently kind of playing, aren't we? Carry on. Oh, I'm building my team. Yeah, I have to play this match because I have to earn the points. I'm winning already. Yeah, just give me a few minutes. My ultimate team, I've got a little bit more points to buy, buy my players. Yes, I'm playing my FIFA, yeah? So you're playing your FIFA and you can't let go of your FIFA. Or for instance, you know, mom shouts out, Nabita, can you go to the shop? You need to buy some milk. Or go to the shop to buy bread. We haven't got any left. Oh, I'm playing right now. Uh, tell him, tell him. Now I went last time. These times come up here in our lives. This is the time of conflict. On one side, our desire is telling us to carry on playing. On the other side, Allah is saying, no, listen to your mother. On the other side, Allah is saying, Adhan is happening, come to the masjid. Pray your salah. Who do we give preference to? Who wins? Who wins? We know, we all know. Unfortunately, this game that we are playing, the cod that we are playing, yeah? The black ops that we are playing, the zombies that we are playing, or the FIFA that we are playing, that unfortunately wins, doesn't it? Yeah. Or we're hanging around with our friends. We're chilling out, yes? And it's time for namaz. We see, oh, it's time for namaz. What does the friend say? Oh, you know, it's time for namaz. My dad said I have to go namaz, yeah? Ah, chill out, man. Don't worry, he won't know. Chill, just chill. Five more minutes, don't worry. Who wins then, Israel? That friend who told you, don't go to, go to mosque, don't pray. Or Allah who's telling us, come to the masjid and pray. Who wins? So, we love Allah, don't we? But who do we love more? We love our FIFA more, don't we? We love our friends more than we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we are showing, which, what, what we are showing through our desires, through our, through our actions. This is what we are displaying. If for the elders, we are, we, are, we are all faced with these dilemmas and scenarios throughout our day. Throughout our day. The time comes, okay, we go home in month of Ramadan most of the times. MashaAllah, everyone's grown nice beard, yes. It's the month of Ramadan, yes. What happens on Eid day? Wife says, oh, you know, Eid day is coming. You know, you need to trim up a bit. doesn't look good. What happens? Who wins? Does Allah win there? Or what our, maybe our wife or somebody else is saying to us? Or maybe when we look in the mirror, what our self is saying to us? What wins there? 
when we are working, time for salah comes. Yeah, this scenario comes for many people. Yes, time for dhuhr comes. We're working. We think, oh, you know, if I go for namaz now, I'm going to miss all these customers. Don't worry, I'll pray a little bit later. I haven't got time now. What happens? It's already asr time. How many times it's already maghrib time? Oh, I miss my dhuhr. I miss my asr as well. Oh, no, if maghrib time is finished. We are faced with these dilemmas, don't we? Day in, day out. We can pick so many scenarios. Every day we are faced with these dilemmas. Where Allah is calling us to one thing, Allah is telling us to do something, and the dunya, this nafs, and the people around us are telling us to do something else. Who do we give preference to? We are giving preference, no doubt, to all the other things besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is where we have failed. This is where we have failed. Unfortunately, we have loved everything besides Allah. Whereas we were so easy to love that one Allah and we would got everything. But we are loving everything else to try to gain the success. We love our wealth and everything else much more compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas this is what we should have held on to. How will it be on that day when we have to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will hold us to account? How will it be that we can even dare to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We have the guts to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah. We all want Jannah, don't we? How will we ask? With which face will we take in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying to Allah that yes, I want Jannah, you know, because I used to come to the masjid. I used to pray. I used to sit in the speeches. I used to do a bit of amal here and there. I used to pray Quran during Ramadan. I used to fast. I went for hajj. I did all these things. How are we going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's like a simple example, you know. If, you know when a person goes to marry somebody, right? You have the interview process and everything, yeah? Nowadays you have to hand in your CV. You know, I just heard the other day. He had to give him a CV to, 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 to for a marriage proposal. Now it's becoming so much difficult nowadays because of all the, the bureaucracy and everything that is involved in all of this process that we have. But nevertheless, the easiest thing in Islam was to get married and we have made it the hardest thing. Now youngsters by the age of 29, 30, 33, you know, one Musalli comes to me the other day and he says his daughter is reached 34 and she can't find anybody to get married to. Why? Because we have made it so difficult to get married. We need this in place, that, that, this, 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 this. Everything has to be in place. But then you can get married. We made the easiest thing, we made it the hardest thing. Because everything involved in it. So nevertheless, when a person goes to get married, right? A person going to this girl and he says, okay, I'm getting married to you. I accept it. She's accepted as well. But what he says to her, he says to her, you know, I'm getting married to you, yeah? But you know, I don't love you fully. I love you, but I don't love you fully yet. You know, this other girl, I love her as well. What do you think is going to happen? Will she say, yeah, don't worry, I'll marry you? What will happen? If she's a bit daring, she'll slap him in the face. How dare you come to me? Like, she'll spare him. She'll swear at him. Yes? Why? Because you're sharing my love with somebody else's love? There's an incident narrated regarding Malik bin Dinar. He was a very pious saint, a saint of his time. A, a woman came to him complaining of a husband. Now many women come complaining regarding husbands. So like this, this woman came complaining regarding her husband. Saying that, you know, Oh Hazrat, no, I do everything for my husband. I care for him. You know, I've done everything for him. I've done his service. I've, I, when he comes home, the food is on the table. Everything is there for him, when he, whatever, what he wants. You know, I look after all his needs. I bore his children as well. You know, I, give, I gave him so many children as well. I did everything for him. There's nothing I didn't do for him. I've done everything for him. But today has been the saddest day of my life. She says, what's happened? She says, today is the day when he came home and he told me that he's marrying a second wife. So he's marrying somebody else. So I've done everything for him, but he's still going to marry somebody else. So Malik bin Dina, rahmatullahi, he faints. When she says this, he faints. When, he's, when he comes to his conscious, the, 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 the companions that are around him, they say to him that, Hazrat, what's happened? Why, how come you fainted? What happened? So he says that it was not because of what she narrated regarding the incident that was specifically of, of really you know, astonishing or well, some, some very powerful, but it was, the, it was the comparison that it has with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, what has he not given to us? That's what we will say. What has Allah not given to me? And despite that, we share the love that we should have for Allah with all the things of the world. We have love for our cars. We have love for our, our clothes. We have love for our money. We have love for everything else materialistic. But we don't have the love that we should have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we need to look at. Every single one of us. We need to think. We need to ponder. We need to worry and cons have consideration and concern regarding how we can try to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. Otherwise, that day of judgment, remember, how will we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What face will be shown to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is quite simply it. You know, we say or we will ask that why is it so important to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why is it so important? It is not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will benefit in, in the minutest amount. Allah will not benefit whatsoever if we love him. It is not that he will, he will become greater because we love him. No, he will not become less great than he is because we don't love him. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at a stage of greatness and he will be the greatest. Doesn't matter how many people love him or don't love him. It doesn't make a difference to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But who does he make a difference to? He makes a difference to us. It makes a difference to us. No, we're human, aren't we? We're human. And we naturally want to do those things which are beneficial to us. Are we going to do something which is going to harm us? No. We're not going to take a knife and put it across our hand, are we? Why? Because we know it's going to harm us. But we're going to do anything that will benefit us. So we're saying right now, logically, it makes sense to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because it will benefit us. So what is stopping us from loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It logically makes sense as well. That if we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will love us as well. In the hadith, in one hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Rasulullah sallallahu wa sallam, he has mentioned that that, my, that servant of mine who draws close to me one hand span length, comes close to me. Then I will come to him, I will come close to him one arm's length. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he goes further, he says, that servant of mine who comes close to me one arm's length, I will come close to him two arms length. A whole, whole. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he further, he says that that servant of mine who comes close to me walking, I will come to him running. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is that being that we are talking about, that creator, that master that we are talking about, who will never let us down. You know, we have so much faith and so much trust, so much, you know, we have towards so much faith in our friends, in our families, in our brothers, in our sisters, in our wives, in our children even, that they will grow up and they will become this person and they will look after me. What happens when that child grows up and becomes that person but doesn't have anything to do with their parents, doesn't want to know their parents anymore? What happens? It hurts. It hurts there, isn't it? Those parents will know. It hurts because you had those aspirations and those desires that your child would grow up to be like this and they have grown up not to be like that. It hurts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that one who you keep hope in and Allah will never let you down. This is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We keep hope in the creation. Where are, we to, where are we heading? Logically, it doesn't make sense. We are keeping hope in the creation of Allah, whether we should be keeping hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator will never let us down. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who in the midst of the night, he is calling out who wants to stand and call for me. Who needs, who needs the desires? Who needs something fulfilled? I will answer his call. This is that master, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Lord, that King, that, that Creator. Which King in the whole of the world? Which leader of the, any, 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 any tribe, any nation, which leader will ever do this? Will stand and will say that I will fulfill your desires. Come on, tell me what you need. Nobody. But that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the one who is prepared to do this. What is stopping us from loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There is nothing stopping us from loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should try to increase in the love that we have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No doubt every single, like I said, every single one of us, we have the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes? But we have to increase in this love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah is saying. Those who have Iman, they are intense in the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what do we mean by intense love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Let's try to depict this from the incidents 
of the previous previous of the previous people, the pious predecessors. We have we know the Anbiya Ali Musalatu Wasalam who we can take example from, yes. One example of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. You know Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, yes? Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam was known as Khalilullah. He was known as what? Khalilullah, meaning the friend of Allah, yes? He was known as a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now how did he become the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is because he sacrificed and he gave up every single thing for Allah. To the extent that he was ready to give his dearest son, Yes, he was really ready to give his dearest son to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam sacrifice. And by these sacrifices he gave, he, he became the dearest or he became the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala known as. So now Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam one day, he is grazing his sheep. He's got a whole flock of sheep, right? And he is taking them out to graze, to eat. So whilst he is grazing whilst the, the, the sheep are, gra are going around he's grazing the sheep he hears one person passing by and he's saying some words in praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this person is saying subhana dhil mulki wal malakut subhana dhil izzati wal azmati wal haybati wal qudrati wal qibriyai wal jabarut this person is passing by and he's praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these beautiful words, which Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam has never heard before. He's glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the Lord of this world, who is the Lord of the heavenly universe, who is the most powerful, who is the omnipotent, who is the you know, magnificent. You know, all these attributes are, are connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this praise. So Ibrahim wasalam, becomes entranced. He thinks this is such wonderful praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being done. I've never heard praise like this before. He is my beloved. And this praise is being done in front of me like this. So he approaches this guy and he says, can you repeat what you've said? Can you repeat it please? So he says, oh, I will repeat it. But what are you going to give to me? You have to give me in something in return. So he says, you know this, this sheep that I've got, this flock of sheep I've got, I'll give you half of them. I'll give you half. Just like that. He says, okay. He takes half the sheep and then he repeats the words. He says, Subhana dil mulki wal malakut. Subhana dil izzati wal azmati wal haybati wal qudrati wal kibriyai wal jabarut. And now he is so amazed and he is so full of joy because of the, 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 the words he hears in, in, in praise of his beloved. In praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again he says, can you repeat it again please? I need to hear it again. So he says, okay, but what are you going to give me this time? He says, I'll give you the other half. I'll give you all of them now. Take him. Take all the sheep. He's ready to give all his possession away to hear the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, okay, he takes all the sheep and then he repeats the words again. He says, Subhana dil mulki wal malakut. Subhana dil izzati wal azmati wal haybati wal qudrati wal kibriyai wal jabarut. And this time Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam cannot bear anymore. He says, oh, these are such wonderful words. I've never heard these words before like this. Can you say again, please? And then he says, this person says, but what are you going to give to me this time? You've given me all your sheep this time. What are you going to give to me now? He says, I will tend, I will look after your sheep for the rest of my life. I will look after all of them. You're going to need somebody to look after your sheep, yes? So I will look after your sheep for you. Please just say it one more time. So then he says it again, and this time he says, Glad tidings to you, Ibrahim. I am an angel who have been sent down in the form of a human by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I've been commanded to take Allah's name in this beautiful manner to see the reaction that you have with him. To see this. This was just a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he passed in flying colors, yes? Ask that youngster. When Aisha's name, or Fatima's name, or Julie's name is taken in front of them, what happens? Butterflies. Yeah. This is Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is feeling this pleasure when Allah's name is being taken in front of him in such beautiful manner. This is the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name is taken, it fills you with ecstasy. You feel that hype, that buzz. 
that my beloved is being mentioned. Yes, I want to listen to this. This is the stage that the Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam are at for love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to try to aim this high. Even if we do not get there, inshallah we will fall short a little bit and we'll get to the other stage. So we're going to aim high, aim to that level. You know, sometimes you mention these kind of incidents of the Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam and people have reservations. They say, oh, but that's Anbiya alayhi wa salam. Yes, that's prophets. We can't reach that stage, can we? That's prophets. Okay, let's leave aside the prophets then. That mention incidents regarding the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, then people still have reservations. They say, okay, no, that's Sahaba though. That's the Sahaba. They, they, they saw the prophets, you know. Now we can't reach that stage of Sahaba. So let's, let's leave aside the Sahaba as well, I say. Let's look at an incident narrated regarding the tabi, one of the Tabi'un, or two of the Tabi'un. The, you know Tabi'un, right, youngsters? Tabi'un are those people who saw the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. The Sahaba are those people who saw the Prophet. And those people who saw the Sahaba are called the Tabi'un. So there were two Tabi'un, two of the Tabi'un. They were captured after a war. You know, they were in war, they were in battle. And after the war, they were, they were, um, you know, when they were having this war, there were two of them were captured by the opposition. Now this, this king of the opposition, what he would do to captives, the people who were captured in war, he, what he would do to them, he would hold a big assembly like this of all his people, he would gather the people. And he would put these people in front and he would put them to shame first, saying that you people went against us, you fought against us, how dare you people do anything like this? And then he would execute them publicly to show an example of what would happen to anybody that tries to fight us, or anybody tries to oppose, oppose us. So nobody amongst the people would ever dare go oppose the king, right? So this is what he would do. This was the custom of the time. So this king, he gets these two tabi'un who have been captured and he presents these two people in this amongst this gathering of the people and he says to the he tries to disgrace them and he says to them this then that and you've been you know you went against us you this is what would happen to you but he sees whilst trying to tarnish their figure he try, he sees signs of bravery on their face he sees that these people are not even scared you know these people are you know they're brave so he thinks to himself rather than just killing them and executing them it's going to be a waste of life why not I try to convert them so they're going to come onto my side and then they will be an asset to my army because these two are very brave people it looks like. So he goes on, he first tries to convert them. He gives them all the luxuries of the world. He says that we'll give you any, any of the women you want. We'll give you all the women you want. We'll give you, we'll give you wealth. Yeah, we'll give you position as well. We'll make you generals in our armies. We'll give you everything in, in the world that you want. Come onto our side. And they say, no, we can't come onto your side. So he says that, you know, look at your people, they've betrayed you. Who, who do you see coming to rescue you? There's nobody coming to rescue you from your people. No, they've left you. They've left you for dead. So they're not coming to rescue you, they've, they've betrayed you. Why do you want to be on their side for? Why do you want to keep protecting them? Come on to our side. This is what he says to them. But they're not budging. They're saying, no, we can't come onto your side. So they're not giving up their iman because they're strong. So then he says to them, he tries to threaten them now because he can't sweet talk them. He can't give them bribery and come onto our side. So he threatens them. He says, if you don't come onto our side, we're going to torture you. And they say, still, no, sorry, we can't accept. He says, okay, that's it. This is enough. So he says, we're going to put you into boiling oil. We're going to put you into boiling oil alive if you don't come onto our side. They're still not budging. He says, okay. He says, bring this big pot. So they bring a big massive pot. They fill it up with oil. And then they boil it. They boil it. When he reaches boiling point, he says to them, look, you're going to be thrown into this oil. You want to come into our side or no? Last chance. They say, no, sorry. We can't accept. So he gets one of them and he throws them into this oil. And he's fried to the state when he is not recognized anymore. He's passed away. He's finished. Whilst this is happening, this king sees... This other companion, this other tabi'i that is there. He sees him and he sees that there's tears welling up in his eyes. And now these drops are rolling down his cheeks. So now the king starts getting happy. 
he's, yes, I've got him. Yeah, he's getting scared. Yeah. So he says to him, oh, you know, you, your companion, you know, I told him, you know, I gave him so many chances. He didn't listen. But I'm giving you a chance as well now. You know, you can come onto our side still. He says, how does he reply? He says, oh, wretched creature. He says to this king, oh, wretched creature. Do you think that I am scared of death? This is why I'm crying. So oh. the king says, oh, you're not crying because of you're scared? He says, no, I'm not crying because I'm scared. So why are you crying for? He says, I'm crying because I've come to realize that I only have one life. I only have one life. You will put me into this oil and it will be finished. How I wish that I had the amount of lives as the amount of hair on my body that I can present each and every life in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what is meant. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ Those who have iman, what do they have? They have intense love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such love that they are willing to give up their own desires, their own lives for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't matter to them. It's for Allah. It goes. That's it. Anything and whatsoever. It doesn't matter. What matters to me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala matters to me. This is our focus. This is what we mean. Now we have understood what we mean. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ Now you understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. He is trying to teach us, telling us that and in many a hadith we will learn as well. Where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned regarding halawatul iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions that a person who wants this halawatul iman, who wants, the, who wants to taste the sweetness of the iman. The person who wants to taste the sweetness of Iman, then what should happen? This person, the first quality Rasulullah mentioned for this person he should have. The first quality is that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah is saying, this should becoming, become more beloved to him than anything whatsoever. Allah and his Rasul become more beloved to him than whatsoever, anything whatsoever. Even himself, even oneself. And once a Sahabi came to Rasulullah and he, he mentioned regarding love and he said that oh Allah oh Rasulullah I love you know I love everything I love I love you he says to Rasulullah I love you but you know I still I love you more than I love my my my, my wife my kids and everything but I still love myself a bit more though no. because he was truthful he wasn't telling a lie was he they were not people who were two-faced they would tell the truth <coughs> so whatever was in their heart they would tell the truth so he would see said that I love myself more than I love you, but I still love you more than I love my, 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 my wife, my children, everything. My possessions, my, I'll give you anything you want. But I love myself a bit more though, yeah? So he says, Rasulullah says, says, still not. Still not, meaning that still not your iman is not fully complete yet. Because Rasulullah had mentioned that a person who wants his iman to be complete, then what does he have to have? He has to have the love for Allah and Rasul more than the love for anything else. So then the Sahabi, he went on the side, he thought, he pondered for a while, and then he comes back. And he says, Rasulullah, now I have made myself understand that I love you even more than I love myself even. And Rasulullah says, Al-An, now. Meaning now you have reached that stage of complete Iman. So this is what we want to try to achieve. We want to try to achieve this complete stage of this high level of Iman. This high level of Iman will be tasted. And some have even mentioned, some muhaddithun have even mentioned physical taste. Now we were talking about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah s.a.w. says that a person will be able to feel the, feel the sweetness of his iman and some have said you will physically be able to taste the sweetness of your iman even. Physically. Some have even gone to that, at that extent where a person will love Allah and his Rasul more and everything that Allah and Rasul have said, this supersedes, this is my priority, this is number one on my list of priorities, everything else comes secondary. Today we have turned the tables. Today everything else comes first. Allah and Rasul is secondary. If we have time, we go to the masjid. On my day off, that's when I will come to the masjid, yes? Otherwise, no, you know, I'm tired. I have to go to work, you know? On my day off, I might wake up for Fajr. Otherwise, I can't wake up for Fajr, you know, because I have to wake up at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. So I can't really pray. This is because we have pushed Allah and Rasul to secondary level. We have to bring them up to primary level. This is our primary. This is the reason why we are in this world. To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our primary task. 
our primary goal. So we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to this level, then we have reached that stage. We can, we can, we can face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, yes? Then we can ask for that jannah that we want. Because we can present that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have loved you Allah. And like we have displayed through the, the examples of our pious predecessors, this is very much possible. This is not something I'm talking about which is, oh, we can't really reach that stage. That's what we're going to think. You know, in this century of ours, we've got so many, so many things around us. It's going to be really difficult for us to reach that stage. If we always think of it as difficult, it will be difficult. But if we think, the minute we start thinking of it as easy, it will be easy. I'll give you an example, right? We gave the example already, right? You know, you're playing this game and mum tells you, go get some milk from the corner shop. How long will it take you if you did do it? Three minutes, four minutes. That's how you just live three minutes away, four minutes away from the corner shop. Go there, buy milk, give the money, come home. That's it. Maybe five minutes. Yes. A person lives far away ten minutes. But this is so hard for us, yes? It's so hard, so difficult, isn't it? When parents tell us to do something, it's so difficult, yes? But the minute our phone, our phone, yes? We have the Samsung, we have the iPhone, yeah? When the minute this doesn't work anymore, it's broken down, what do we do? We line up outside the iPhone shop for an hour if we have to, yes? We'll go all the way to city, to Oxford Circus, why? Because there's no Samsung shop anymore here, yeah? Why? Because we have to give our phone in. That will be easy for us, yes? But it'll be so difficult to go to the corner shop. Why? Why will it be so difficult? Because we have thought of it as hard. If you think of something as hard, it will be hard. If you think that moving this from here today is hard, you will be hard. But if you think moving a mountain from this place to this place is easy, you will be easy. It's the perception we have, the thinking we have. If we think of something as easy, it will be definitely easy. If we think loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is no doubt easy, reaching the stage of intense love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is easy, is possible. Allah would not have made us or told us something to do which is not possible for us. Allah knows us, yes? He's created us. He knows that we can reach that stage. We have to try. If we try, we start walking towards it, Allah will come to us running. Allah will make the other part fill it up. But we just have to start to try. This is our job. And practically, before we go away from here today, we want to take away some practical things with us. How are we going to, we've heard all this speech, yeah? We've heard this regarding this love for Allah. But how are we going to practically bring it into our lives? What are we going to do daily that is going to come into our lives, this love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then inshallah for the next time we can evaluate. We can see whether we are bringing this into our lives or not. So let's take away one thing with us. There's many things we can take. Let's take away one thing at least with us. And inshallah if every single one of us here take it upon ourselves that we'll take this away from with us and we will try to act on this, then inshallah we can say today's gathering is, is a success. Every night before we go to sleep, whilst we are lying on our beds, we are going to think of all the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has favored me with today. Think. Just close your eyes and think. If you start to think, you will start to get lost the amount of favors Allah has given us. Start to think from the, the, the physical body, the body parts that Allah has given to us. These eyes that Allah has given to us. It's a, it's a blessing, yes? So many people who do not have this eyesight. So many people. Allah has given us this brain. Allah has given us this ears we can hear with. So many people who cannot hear. Allah has given us this tongue, this nose, this, this, these fingers Allah has given to us. Allah has created us in a perfect way. In a perfect way Allah has created us. How many people around us that we even know of who are not created in a perfect way, who have not been given this in this perfect way. This is blessing from Allah. Yes? This is a bounty of Allah. If you start to think of the favors that Allah has given to us, when you start to think of the favors that somebody has done towards you, no doubt the love for that person increases. You know a friend of yours who is giving you so many favors, who is always there for you, you love that person so much. Why? Because you talk, start to think that bichara, this person is always looking after me. He's doing me so many favors. You start to think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like this, that look at my Lord Allah, He's given me everything. Despite the sins that I have done today and so many disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I have done today. Think of that once we're going to sleep. So much disobedience I've done of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today I've done this, I've missed this salah, I've done this wrong, I've done that wrong. Despite me doing all of these things, 
No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us this air to breathe. The air that Allah has given us to breathe, we can't even see it, yes? But this is a blessing from Allah, yes? What happens if Allah was to stop the supply of air today? We'll all die, we'll all die. Yes? So despite the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we go on throughout our lives doing, does Allah ever say that I'll take this away from you? Now if a friend of ours, our friend is looking after us, you know sometimes we need some money, we can't afford to pay our rent this month, okay here, yeah, borrow some money this month. Oh you know we need, we need something, oh yes here yeah, I'll come, I'll take you. you no know, we don't have a car, they'll take us in, our, in their car. We have a friend like this. But the minute, the day we... we, we we, are, we do something wrong to them. Yeah, we do something wrong, something really bad to them. Will they be there for us anymore? They say, oh yeah, you're doing this to me, I'll show you, I'll take all of these things away from you. Friends, no more there. Yeah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, despite us doing all of this disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the day, when has Allah ever said, I'll take this air away from you today? No air for you today. Has Allah starved us of oxygen like this? No. This is how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. This is how much favors and blessings Allah gives to each and every one of us. Think of the, 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 for the youngsters, think of the parents that Allah has given to you. Look at how many children around the world are suffering. How many people are suffering around the world? How many luxuries, how much luxuries we are living in? We have warmth, we have the comfort of our homes, we have food when we want. How many are people around the world who do not have food? who do not have the warmth in the, in, the, in the cold that they are in, who do not have clean water to drink, who, whose parents have may have passed away because they're trying to you know, save them from the, the ter turmoil and everything that is happening in the world. How many orphans are living in the world? How many people, I know, you just think about it, and you think of all the blessings that Allah has given upon me. You think of it. And every night, if you think of these blessings, like Allah, that, that Allah has bestowed upon us, no doubt, day by day, day by day, we will see an increase in the love we have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Simple task, yes? Everyone can do this, yes? I'm not saying that wake up for tahajjud and pray 12 rakat, 8 rakat, and you know, recite Surah Al-Baqarah. I'm not saying every, anybody like this, am I? All simple tasks for every single one of us to take off with us. When we're going, we're lying down on our bed, think of the pleasure of the, 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 the favors and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us and if you think of these it will slowly increase in the love that we have for Allah and we'll, when we do this we will want to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we'll want to come to the masjid and perform fajr it won't be a burden it won't be a chore we'll want to give sadaqah in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we'll want to do the good deeds because we love Allah we want to do things for him this is how it will be we want to reach that stage, don't we? This is what is meant by this is what is meant by halabatul iman, the the, the 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 taste that we will have, this pleasure that we will feel when we worship Allah subhanahu wa taala, because we love Allah subhanahu wa taala. So may Allah subhanahu wa taala give us the, all the ability to bring this love for Allah subhanahu wa taala in this in our lives. You know, this is the the pith and this is the real the core. If we love Allah subhanahu wa taala, I say everything falls into place. Everything falls into place. You know, love for our wives, love for our children, love for our neighbors, love for our fellow humans. Everything will fall into place. Why? Because we will understand that these are all creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has told me to fulfill their hukuk, their rights. Everything will fall into place. So like this, we try to bring this into our lives. We try to bring the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like the simple task for us to take with us every night. Before we go into sleep, we're going to think of the favors that Allah has given upon me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to bring this love for him into our lives. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa akhiru da'wan. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive.